supernatural multiplication and uh, we are looking at the indices the factors that bring about supernatural multiplication when they are in place and we have understanding that there is no multiplication without fruitfulness you have to first bear fruit before you will be able to multiply your fruit and you remember that this is our year of reigning with christ it, the ultimate intention of the father for us on earth is to reign with his son jesus so he sent jesus to model for us the life of reigning how does a man reign on earth? You look at Jesus. He's our role model. Praise God. And then, if we are going to reign, we are going to start with the foundation, which is fruitfulness. It is when you bear fruit, according to the first commandment in Genesis. It is when you bear fruit, and you are able to multiply your fruit and you are able to to expand and spread your fruit then you will be able to rule your world and dominate over your world and reign so the foundation is fruitfulness and then we did say that there is no fruit without a seed praise god you cannot be a fruit if you didn't plant a seed. Everything starts with a seed. A relationship that will work starts with a seed of thoughts. You look at this person, you feel I can have a relationship with this person. It starts with a thought. And then you went forward to plant that thought as a sword. I mean to plant that thought as a word because words are seeds so you planted that thought as long as the thought remains in your heart and you have not you have not spoken it out you haven't planted a seed for relationship until you spoke out the person does not know there is no seed and so you can't expect a harvest because our people say that the word that we heard with the, the ear is the heart that we can see. You don't know a man's heart towards you until you have heard the word from their mouth. So relationship starts with a seed. And that seed comes as a word. So your thought is a, is a seed. Everything starts with a seed. A great company that today become a glorious company started with a seed of a thought. Then the thought was planted as a word. What the, 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 the seed is not planted until somebody has spoken something. That's what Jesus meant when he says, except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and die. If you don't plant it, it does not germinate. You've got to plant it and watch it germinate. So we have said that when we are now talking about supernatural multiplication, we are talking about the multiplication that God is the source. The multiplication that is rooted in God, dependent on God. Amen. Amen. The multiplication that is not coming from personal too much sufferings of a man. A multiplication that is a result of God deciding to help you in life. And we say that if your multiplication is going to come from God, then you need to be aware of what is the seed of God. Because everything starts with a seed. If your multiplication is going to be rooted in God, you need to understand what the seed of God is because without a seed, there is no harvest. So what did we say from the previous studies that is the seed of God? Hallelujah. The word of God is the seed of God. 
So if you want to see the harvest of God in your life, you must consciously plant the word of God. The miracle you are trusting God for is like a bloated stomach without a baby when you are hoping for that miracle and you don't have a word anchor. You must have a word anchor. And you must speak that word. You must water it day in, day out. You must pray that particular word. That's how we do it. And let the word grow. Let it germinate. And it will bear fruit. It will manifest. You have to believe the word. An angel walked up to Mary. Spoke the word. And the word became flesh. Grew in the womb of the woman because she believed what the, what the Lord told him. And the word grew in her and became a baby. And John said in verse 14, chapter 1, verse 14, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld this glory as the glory of the only begotten Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. Hallelujah. But the foundation was the seed of the word. Now, we have come to the point where we said that in building this, re in, 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 in the realm of multiplication, the seed of God that is planted in you becomes a spirit on the inside of you. We saw in John chapter 6 verse 63, Jesus said the word that I speak to you, they are the spirit and they are life. So the word that is coming from this altar this morning is not just an ordinary word. It's a spirit and it is alive. That is why there is a guarantee of harvest. The word is a spirit. The word is life. If you open your heart and the word finds a settlement in you, it will find expression through you. If the word can find a settlement in you, if it can be rooted, but you remember our previous studies, the, the sower went out to sow. The seed fell in different kinds of grounds. And we were told that these grounds represent different kinds of human hearts. Praise God. Out of the different kinds of grounds that the seed was sown, it was only one kind that germinated and bear fruit. You see that? He said, while the sower was saying, the birds of the air was flying around. While the sower was sowing, there were thorns and thistles. Why the sower was sowing, that devil was waiting for me to finish so he can just hijack the word and leave you empty. The sower is the preacher of the word that is preaching under the power of the Holy Ghost. The ground is your heart. The seed is the word. But when the seed germinates, it becomes a spirit in you. Now, when the spirit begins to manifest the fruit of the seed, the number one thing that the fruit, the spirit manifests is when the spirit, the seed is the word and the word becomes a spirit in you. Now, when the spirit germinates and begins to manifest the fruits, what is the number one fruit that it manifests? Hallelujah. Please, I'm glad that you are. We are not, the thief has not stolen that one from your heart. Praise God. Because if it's stolen, it cannot be a fruit. Follow these things that we are teaching. That is the, what makes us different from the world of Adam. This is the guarantee that you are going to be prosperous because you didn't get any seed from Oboli, you didn't get any seed from Ekanka. You didn't get any seed from any form of or diabolic means, from any occult. So your harvest is not going to come from them. If you are comparing yourself with them, that's what the Christian people don't understand. 
they sit among people who are who are who are depending on some occultic powers and everything from morning to night they are talking against church they are talking against bible they are talking against pastors you don't know that they are messengers of darkness. They want to destroy your own seed that has been planted in you. Yet you don't have the source that they have. They are sources of the devil. So they don't spend time to talk against the devil. They spend time to talk against your own source. You wake up, you are empty because you have joined them to kill the seed that is planted in you. They see everything about the church as wrong. Why? They are messengers of that. They are antichrist. To be antichrist is to be against Christ. A man that spends morning, afternoon, and night talking about church. Do you know what the church is? The body of Christ. You can't be of Christ and be talking about them against the body of Christ. But you sit among them. And then they will bring Pastor A, you will laugh. They will talk offering, all of you will talk and laugh. They will talk tight, you will talk and laugh. They will just be killing every seed that are, you leave that conversation that day empty. But they have fulfilled the assignment of their master. So the master will keep prospering them. And you will come back and you say, but me, I am giving tight. I'm giving offering. I'm not prospering. This guy is prospering. Why? He is serving his master. Help you are helping him to kill your own seed. The devil wants you to come to a point where you are you are asking, but it's true. This guy that is talking like this, he is prospering, but I'm not prospering. Little did you know that he is preaching their own the gospel of their kingdom. And as long as you are supporting the gospel of their kingdom, you are killing your own seed. But the, 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 the God they are serving will prosper them so that we, they will make you believe that Jesus is fake. I think that's basically what I want to bring up this morning in a while. But let's move. So building the right, what we're going to just spend time on is building the right relationships and staying in the love of God. I've just tried to, to look at, to review what we have done. We have said that the primary seed, the primary fruit of the Holy Ghost is love. Actually, the consummation, the totality of what Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 and 23 is talking about is love. He talked about nine fruits. But if you take note of that word, he did not say the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Ah. Did you, can, can you give me Galatians chapter, chapter 5 verse 22? But the fruit, which is the fruit of the Spirit is. So he's talking about one thing. The fruit of the spirit is. If he's talking about all this, he would, what kind of English is? The fruit of the spirit is love, is joy. The fruit of the spirit is. If he's talking, uh, English is still English. If he's talking about more things, he will say the fruits of the spirit are. Amen. This one is not about took me to the Okay, sorry, man. <laughs> Praise God. We are reading Bible. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Now, every other thing you see here is talking about how love is demonstrated. How love is experienced. How love is manifested. Praise God. We are going to take time to deal with these things one by one. We've been taking them. We have been taking them so that you will understand that the fruit of the spirit is love. Nothing more, nothing less. Why? God is love. So anytime God manifests, the manifestation of God is love. 
God is love. Every other thing you see in this place in verse 23 is talking about the different ways that love, the personality of the spirit of God is love. The person of God is love. When you live in love, you live in God. When you carry love, you carry God. When you manifest love, you manifest God. But then, generations after generations, we talk about love. People do not know how to love if they don't understand how love manifests. If they don't understand what love actually is. So he's now showing us the fruit of the spirit is love. But love, we ex when we experience love, we experience it in form of joy. We experience it in form of peace. When we express love, when we show people love, we show love in form of long-suffering, patience. We show it that no matter how men want to push us to get us to do them harm, we manifest patience. We suffer long. The word long-suffering there means patience, endurance. We manifest love through gentleness. How do you show that you love? You are gentle to the people you love. You are not wicked and crooked to them. How do you show that you love? You manifest love through manifesting goodness. We are going to take time to study these things. You manifest love through manifesting faith. Now, when you manifest love, look at this number two, meekness and temperance is the way that love empowers us to live life. So there are two, three major things we're going to be studying here. We are going to be studying love, how we experience love. And we're going to be looking at how we express love. And we're going to be looking at how love energizes us to live. Love energizes us to live a life of meekness and temperance. Temperance is self-control. Praise God. It's going to be beautiful. I want to encourage you to see this is what makes us a different world from the world of Adam. In this, we will prosper, but our prosperity is rooted in Christ. It's not rooted in the world. So if you want to do it the style of the world, you will still be struggling because you will be fighting against the real essence of who you are. So learn these things. Be in church. Be around. Be here on Thursday. Be here on Sundays. Sit down. If you were here on Thursday, I'm sure we really taught gospel here on Thursday. Me, I know. Hallelujah. I know, I know when you teach, you know you teach. Glory to God. Okay, so, looking at these things now, we are, love is the center of what we are talking about. Every other thing is talking about how love is experienced. Because if you have never experienced love, you cannot express love correctly. The reason people say, uh, I love you, I love you. And when they are saying I love you, in their mind they are imagining how you will look on the bed. It's because they don't understand the meaning of love. They themselves have not experienced love. Now I need you to understand that almost every one of us, the background where we are coming from is not the background where love is genuinely understood. Praise God. I was studying this thing. I remember that at the age of four, I was already being abused by a lady who is year, far older than me. So from that line of four years, abuse from four years, five, but I still see people today, they are living. I was called to conduct deliverance on a pastor who would just finish preaching and walk straight to a, ha to, to a prostitute house to buy a prostitute. After this thing is almost destroying his life, I was invited to do conduct deliverance for him. So in the course of long period of prayer and deliverance, he was telling me, let me tell you my foundation. I was abused by an, an older lady when I was 
eight years, nine years, and I grew up like that. I began to live with that mentality. All right. He was abused from eight, nine years, sexually and otherwise. But from four years, me, I started getting abused. Abuse is on, in, in the bush, in the water. We go to the river to ex, ex, express the stupidity that I was taught by someone who is almost like about, she's about 20 years or thereabout then. But I cannot live my life at this age and be talking about the abuse of four years old. That's what the Bible is talking about in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. He said, the word of God is spirit breathed. It is inspired by the Holy Spirit. And it is good for teaching. It is good for correction. It is good for training. This is the, the area that I love. The word of God is good for training in righteousness. I used the word of God to train myself in righteousness. So no matter the environment where I find myself, the past that I have left does not catch up with me. I am living in the righteousness of Christ. Anywhere I go, I announce it. It is a training that I deliver. You know, I was among pastors, young pastors when we were growing up, we would come together. People would be doing things like things they are learning when they have become pastors and they want people to know that I know things so not just because I'm a pastor. I'll just stay quiet. And one day the daughters of our general overseer called me and said, Pastor Bonnie, why are you the way you are? Did you after deep questions I sat them down and I said you don't know where I'm coming from. You have no idea what my life was. All of you see me here as the anointed gentle brother Bonnie. All these things, people are jumping up and down. I have decided to live my life like this because I don't want what will resurrect my old self. This is the life I have decided to live. And I don't want anything that will, that will resurrect the old me. Because I know the old me. And I have part ways with him. And I don't want ever to come together with him in any form, in any manner. Training in righteousness. Nobody was born a saint. Nobody was born an angel. Nobody was born God. You were born a sinner. We were all born in sin. But we got training in righteousness. The word of God helps you to train yourself in righteousness. I overcame alcohol. I overcome immorality. I overcame or I overcame, you know, growing up and I, I know I was not born in a, a wealthy family but I was living among wealthy people. I wanted to do anything to belong to their class. How did I overcome these lives? How did I overcome these lives? And I'm, I'm living the righteous. I know without any iota, it's not a boast. Brothers, I am living the righteousness of Christ. Me, I know. Praise God. It is the righteousness of Christ. What made that possible? Training in righteousness. You train yourself in righteousness. That's what we are doing. That's what we are getting you to understand here. Train in righteousness. You will see prosperity. There is a door. David said, open unto me the gate of the righteous that I will enter through it. There is a gate of prosperity that is not the, the type that the world opens. There is a gate of wealth that is not the type that the world opens. Open unto me the gate of the righteous. What defeats men, that crumbles men in this generation is sin. Because the Bible says, 1 John chapter 3 verse 8, it says, whosoever commits sin belongs to the devil. Because the devil sinned from the beginning. But for this reason, the Son of God was made manifest. Hallelujah. This is my 13th to 15th, getting to 15 years in South Africa. 
before we were coming, there is no kind of warning they didn't give us that this is where you come and surrender. We have not surrendered. Glory to God. We are still holding on the righteousness of Christ. No matter the suffering, no matter the pain, no matter the difficulty, how are we able to stand? It is not just by confession. Training in righteousness. Training in righteousness. That's the reason the word, that the man of God will be, will be completely equipped. Training in righteousness. So what are part of the ways that we train ourselves in righteousness? Build correct relationships and stay in the love of God. If you understand this concept and add it to the things you begin to practicalize, you are setting solid foundation for, for infallible multiplication. A dimension of multiplication that nothing can pull down. Are you hearing me? So let's quickly take something quickly, some, something quickly from this place because I really need to pray for you. I need, I need to take some time to pray. We, can, we, we, we are spending time in God's presence and God is speaking strong words to us. This multiplication we are teaching is because of what we are seeing. You will experience multiplication. We, listen, you will experience it in the realm that witches and wizards do not, do not attack. Did you understand? Do you remember the Bible? In righteousness you will be established. That's the word of God. And you will be far from oppressions. It will not come near you. So, the Ekuna Mashatabaya, Job was a righteous man and the richest man in the East. Righteous and the richest. That is what we are raising in Christ's world. You will be righteous and you will be among the richest in your generation. Lift up your voice and shout hallelujah. We are raising Christocentric billionaires. We are not afraid to sound like that. Christocentric, yet billionaires. <laughs> so in the realm of multiplication, relationship is indispensable. And the soul of relationship is love. We have said this repeatedly. The quality and the quantity of people you have around you will ultimately affect your life in the season of multiplication. Start thinking, start listening, and start thinking very seriously. Start writing whatever you can write. The quality and the quantity of people you have around you will ultimately affect your life in the season of multiplication. So relationship, we are relational beings. We are created for relationship. Both vertical and horizontal relationship. So let's look at the dynamics of relationship in the realm of multiplication. I want to pick up one or two things and pray for you. You need the right people in your life at the stage of... You see how many times I repeated this in different ways. You need the right people. If you, must, if you must multiply and bear fruit, and if your fruit and multiplication must last, Jesus says, you didn't choose me. I chose you that you will bear fruit, that your fruit will last, your fruit will remain. Jesus does not, doesn't want you to be a shooting star that rises today and disappears tomorrow. He does not want you to be among the people that they will say, ah, he was rich. I know when he was rich. That, God forbid, it will never be said concerning you. You will never think, I remember when I was a soldier. You will remain a soldier until Christ calls you home. Hallelujah. You cannot live in your past glory. 
But if you are going to enjoy sustainable wealth, sustainable multiplication, sustainable fruitfulness in your life, you need right people around you. So be careful to build the right kind of people around you according to your needs. Be careful to build. If you don't build them, you can't have them. You don't buy right relationships. You build them. You don't marry right relationships. You marry a man or a woman, but you build the right relationship. Praise God. You've got to consciously, there is no perfect human being anywhere. Whatever you are looking for is not completely loaded in one man. Mm -mm. You build the right relationship. 300 and something men, we are born in the house of Abraham and they were trained. He built the right men. And whenever there was battle, his men will go for him and fight for him. Be careful to build the right kind of people around you according to your need. Don't invest too much money in a relationship you have not invested time to investigate and build. Do not invest too much money in a relationship you have not invested time to investigate and build. So look at this. Don't start with money because you will regret. Any money you invested in a relationship you did not have knowledge for will be your school fees for learning that relationship. By the time the money is lost, you will now start learning the relationship.
you know her as Osha. Stay at that level that you know her as Osha's sister in church. Don't come back crying to me. That's why I'm teaching you now. If you must go beyond Osha's sister relationship, investigate that side. Spend time to investigate that side. Are you here with me? Yes. That you see that this one is called a deacon. Know him as a deacon. Relate with him as deacon Angela. Deacon Angel. You see, he's a combination of deacon plus angel. Stay at that rim. You can go for lunch. You can enjoy things with him at least as a brother in church. But before you start going into in order for that investment, investigate that area. Because yes, relationships can make or mar you. Everybody gathers together in the presence of Jesus as 12 apostles. But they didn't know that what John is thinking about Jesus is not what Judas is thinking about him. The two of them started with J and they were chosen by Jesus. Don't conclude that we are all apostles. You don't know where I'm coming from. You don't know what is my vision about this Jesus we are both serving. So if John had started listening to everything Judas was saying because all of them are apostles, the two of them will join hand to kill Jesus before his time. Jesus will say, oh, God bless you, Sister Mary, for this perfume you brought to me. Judas will corner John and say, if this man is holy, he cannot be putting that kind of expensive perfume. Is he not here to help the poor? There are too many poor people in this land. John will conclude and say, this guy is one of us. And I mean, he is thinking humbly. Jesus should be humble. He shouldn't be such an arrogant preacher. How can he accept such and be wasting the thing on his feet? Sell this thing and we help the poor. You have been teaching us how to help the poor. But the moment he said that, John knew. I know this boy as an apostle, but I don't know him as in, in terms of how he deals with money. Let me take time. Since money, he wants us now to begin to discuss money. Let me take time to understand how he relates with money. And that was why John was the person who said, when he said that we should have sold the thing, he wasn't saying it because he cares for the poor, but because he wants the money in the poor so that he can be stealing it because he has been stealing money from the poor. No one else knew that Judas was stealing money from the poor. Judas talked like a righteous br brother in church, a righteous apostle. But John investigated the financial relationship, the, the life of Judas when it comes to money. He knew that motive is not motivation. Are you hearing me? Yes. Motive is different from motivation. You can motivate people with your mouth, but you have a different motive in your heart. He said, Judas, I've heard you. This man is not a fool. He's our pastor. Uh, the one he has chosen to do, he is wiser than me and you. So let's not begin to judge and question everything the pastor does. Judas left him. Praise God. So, do not make commitment beyond your knowledge of a person. Make commitment only in the area you have known the person by the Holy Spirit. Something deep is coming out here. I hope you will understand it. Proverbs chapter 26 verse 8 and 10. Honoring a rebel will backfire like a stone tied to a slingshot. Proverbs chapter 26 verse 8. He says, honoring a rebel, a kutu lagada. This is living translate, living Bible. Honoring a, a rebel will backfire like a stone. You see a rebellious person. You don't know that this person is not interested in your well-being. 
you honored him you made everybody know this is my friend everywhere you are going maybe the guy is rich everywhere you are going you are telling people this is my friend this is my friend this is my brother you you are honoring the person you are magnifying the person before All your relation your other relations and friends and everybody he said it will backfire against you be careful who you honor when you honor your, when you give your vision to a man who is not interested in your forward movement, they will kill your vision and still accuse you. Honoring a rebel, the Bible says it will backfire. Like a stone in a slingshot. You push it forward and leave the, the slingshot. It will backfire and hit your head. Bam. Now look at verse 10. He says, O Yaba Salakato. He said, The master may get better work from an untrained un, 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 un apprentice than from a skilled rebel. The master. In this case, you are the master of your business that you want. You are expecting expansion and multiplication in your business, in your family life, in your finances, in your spiritual life, in your prayer life. He says, it is better to have an untrained apprentice that is not rebellious against you secretly than to have a rebellious, well-trained, well-learned person. He says, the master, the master, he will get, he will get, the master may get better work. So, it don't first go after competence. Look for character. In building people around you, I mean people who are meant to be part of your journey. People who are meant to go far with you in life, in gathering them, in building them, first look for character, not just competence. If they have competence, void of character, they will use their competence to swindle you. The master may get better work from an untrained apprentice than from a skilled rebel. A skilled rebel. A, a rebel who is skillful. Let me read that from message translation. Putting a fool in a place of honor is like setting a mold brick on a marble column. You have a marble column. You get a mud brick and put inside it. It's a wrong placement. Don't put a fool or a wicked person in a place of honor because they will honorably destroy you. Look at it in verse 10 again from message translation. Hire a fool or a drunk and you shoot yourself in the foot. Hire a fool. You see somebody. He says he's looking for a job. You just hire them. A stranger. A drunkard. A fool. He says you are shooting yourself. You are about to, to cut your feet and, begin and start limping. What is he saying in all this? No men before you make commitment in their lives. Know them. Find out who they are. So let's look at that from a King James Version. Um, 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 maybe uh, um, um, NIV. Let's look at it from NIV. Verse 10. Let's look at verse 10. Like an archer who wounds at random is one who hires a fool or any passerby. Hmm. This thing matters so whether church like an archer. You know who is an archer? They shoot the arrow shooters. So, like an archer who wounds at random, he wounds, he wounds anybody without checking who this wound will be. He wounds at random. He is he who hires a fool or any passerby. You see someone who is just passing, he say, I know how to do this thing. You hire them. They will shoot at random. 
and you are not sure who will be wounded. Don't make commitment beyond your knowledge. Do not commit treasure in the hands of strangers. Study men before committing great things in their hands. Your love is of great treasure. Don't commit your love carelessly. Don't commit your heart carelessly. Trust is very expensive. Don't throw it away carelessly. But you are not meant to be a critic. You must come to a point where you will trust people. But follow the order. Investigate before investment. Hallelujah. In the realm of multiplication, learn to choose and employ your devil. Don't let them employ you. So, somewhere along the line, you will have no option than to employ a devil. As you keep employing, you must employ one devil. Because out of every ten person that stand around you, one of them is a pure devil. Very living devil. You need to know which one is the devil. So when you are employing the person, you know you are paying him as a devil to be doing the work of a devil for you. But the challenge is, when you don't know a devil as a devil, the, the, the problem is that the devil usually want to employ us first. And when the devil employs you, he that pays the piper dictates the tone. When the devil employs you, his ultimate interest is to destroy you. Ten ten of John, the thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. When you are the one who employed the devil, you will tell him what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. You, you know that he's just going to do the work of a devil. But because you employed him, you will tell him where to be doing that work. That's why, have you ever heard Jesus complain that Judas Iscariot was, Judas was stealing his money? He employed him there to stay with that money and allow him to finish his ministry before he will sell him. Because if Judas was not finding money in the, in the post, he would have sold Jesus before his time. And then, and then, the people who bought Jesus will be blocking his way everywhere he's going. We are our property. So Jesus kept him busy with the money. He knew that there is a point where he will need the ministry of Judas. Peter was not going to be able to do that ministry. John can't do it. So he needed Judas to do that. Please, this thing I'm teaching is deep mysteries. Multiplication cannot happen without people. And you are going to meet angels and you are going to meet devils. Angels will not be a trouble. That's why we are training you on how to deal with the devils. Focus on managing angels, but learn how to deal with your devil because they will come. If you check your life, you will realize that maybe you have met more devil than you met angels. You have been praying, Lord, can I meet one angel today? And you walk out there, one devil will just push you. So look at what Jesus said. He is our role model. We are learning from him. Hallelujah. In, 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 in John chapter 6 verse 70, Jesus said, Have I not chosen you the twelve? Yet one of you is a devil. He didn't say one of you is like a devil. He said, one of you is a pure devil. Everything from him. So, I went to market, to, to the labor market to hire, to hire people, to employ people. And I employed 12 faithful men and one devil. You need a devil, though. Don't forget what I'm saying now. If you want to fire every devil in your employment, every devil, every devil around you, that day you will need the activity of devils, you will be without him. And you will know that faithful men are, are, are useless when the devil is needed. Didn't you see that sometimes God gives Satan himself assignment to do? Because such assignment, Angel Gabriel cannot do it. These are mysteries, though. Very serious mysteries you need to understand. Mm. 
Amen. So Jesus says, I chose the two of the twelve of you, but I know that out of you twelve, eleven of you are faithful men. One of you is a pure devil. I know him. But I employed him. Now look at that. He employed the devil and made him the treasurer of the of the of the of the, of, the, of, the, of his business. Of his company. Made him the treasurer. Why? He knows that where the devil's trouble is going, he, wa he wanted to make sure that I am not allowing Judas to be very free and be looking for somebody to spoil their mind. So let him be fighting with money. Let him be stealing. And his conscience be, be attacking him. While he's dealing with his conscience and his money, he will allow me to finish ministry. When he now finished his ministry, he walked up to him. When Judas came now to kiss him, he said, my friend, whatever you need to do, do it quickly. This is the right time for you to manifest. I have always known you. But I didn't allow you to manifest because my time has not come. Now don't waste more time. I need to go home. Kill me quickly. Sell me quickly. Just say, oh God, you know. Okay now. Uh, people see him. Mm -hmm. They collected him. Are you the Jesus of Nazareth? I'm the one. If you are looking for me, let these ones go. This is the right time. If your devil employ you, you will be like Adam and Eve. That's the difference between the first Adam and the second Adam. The first Adam carefully was enjoying the garden that God gave to him. And suddenly the devil walked into the garden and began to discuss employment with Eve. And as they were talking, we were talking, he was, you know, remember, an untrained apprentice that is loyal to your cause, loyal to your vision, loyal to your destiny, can do better work than a skilled rebel. So the devil came, he began, she began to, he began to have conversation with Eve and Eve learned her heart to the devil. Eve did not employ the devil, the devil employed her. And he that pays the piper, she, he told her, I can, you can enjoy what this wicked God has never given to you if you can listen to me. So Eve switched allegiance. And began to listen to the devil. And the devil began to tell her, this is what to do, this is what to do. But for Jesus, Jesus was telling his devil, this is where I want you to walk. Stay there so I can keep my eye on you while you keep your eye on the money. You have to plan relationships when you come to the realm of multiplication. You have to carefully plan who you relate with and how you relate with them. Otherwise, listen, everything is not just about love your neighbor, charity begins at home. How do you love? You need to know how to love. That's what we are teaching. And we, we have been taking it gradually because I want everyone we, with everyone we taught, whatever we have, taught, we have taught you, to enter and settle in your heart. You need to begin to practicalize. You need to begin after today to look into your real, the relationship, the people around you. Name them one by one. Who is John? Who is James? Who is Judas? Who is Andrew? You need to know who Peter is among them. Understand what their assignment is in your life and relate them as such. Those who belong to your yesterday must be relieved. You cannot be relating with yesterday and still be, be effective in tomorrow. You can't tell me, Pastor, I know that he's not my husband, but I just don't know what to do. I don't know how to get away from him. That means you don't know how to get into your tomorrow. If you don't know how to get away from your yesterday, you are simply saying, I have made up my mind that I am not interested in my tomorrow. 
There is no way you can live in Egypt and live in Canaan at the same time. If you must enter Canaan, you must take a journey from Egypt. You cannot stand at the shores of Cape Town and you are saying, I want to be in England. Take a leave from Cape Town. Those who belong to yesterday, you must bid them farewell and remember them the same way you remember yesterday oh while you focus in the future. Amen. And you are going around yesterday. Everybody that sees you Monday tonight, you are around your yesterday. People believe that there is something between you and this yesterday. So even when your future sees you, he will conclude that you have a relationship with yesterday. Fusho cannot embrace you when you are still holding yesterday. Can't somebody understand? Fusho cannot embrace you because he said, oh, okay. I don't want to encroach. This guy still has something with yesterday. They still see you that you belong. You are the same person. You are with them. All of you are the same. You have to separate yourself. Let me just finish this thing. Let me finish at least one place because I've, I've gone very uh, Listen my brothers and sisters. Failure is an orphan. But success has many brothers and sisters, many friends. As long as you are fruitful and your life is making friends, you are going to attract brothers and sisters. People who don't know you may even call you on phone and say, I am that your uncle's brother's mother's uh, son that was born in Ijabode. Yes, when your father was living in England, your mother gave birth to that brother and that sister. Uh, and if you answer carelessly, they will rebuke you. Don't you have respect for elders? As long as you are making progress. If you are a failure, you will be an orphan. Now, if you are going to survive the realm of success and be able to help those that you are sent to help in life, you need to be careful to work on your relationships. Hallelujah. Understand that a Peter may deny you, but he cannot betray you. So if you, what you need at this stage is not a betrayer, you don't need a Judas. Are you hearing me? If what you need at this stage is not betrayer, you don't need a Judas. When the time of betrayer comes, you can consciously choose your Judas. And you know you are bringing him to do an assignment. A John will be willing to die for you even in your absence. You are not there, but he's ready to die for you. Now, but where the question is, if John is willing to die for you, it means that he loves you. Now, the big question is, are you lovable? Are you lovable? Can you be loved? That's actually the message. It's not about the John. There is a force of love that kept Judas in the company of Jesus without hurting him until the appointed time. As wicked as demonic as Judas was, love prevented him from manifesting until the time, the right time. Are you lovable? How, how well can people love you? Can, if people open their heart, can you stay and settle down? Now that where, that's actually where the matter is. Can you be loved? Do you know how to receive love when people are giving you love? Do you know how, let's not even talk about how to love. Do you know how to receive love? There are some people that have tried all they know to love you, but the moment they come close to you, you become a scorpion. You can love a scorpion. You carry a scorpion and put inside your bed, inside your bed that you want to love a scorpion. How are you going to do that? You will learn by fire, by force, that men do not love scorpion. Excuse me, brother. Are you a scorpion? Sister, are you a snake? 
Are you lovable? That's where we now begin to teach that love must be three dimensional. Love from God and love for God must be the foundation before the love for yourself and love for others. If you have not encountered the love of God, you don't know how to love yourself. And he says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. So if you don't love yourself, you are not capable of loving your neighbors. But the foundation is encountering the love of Christ. Excuse me. Have you encountered the love of Christ? So if you go back to Galatians chapter 5 where we started. How do I know if I have encountered the love of Christ? How do we encounter the love of Christ? How does it happen in our life? We say that we experience the love of Christ in two forms. In the form of the joy of the Holy Ghost. In the form of the peace that Christ gives. Hallelujah. You can go and get the message that we taught on Thursday evening. It will help you to begin to have understanding, a foundational understanding of how joy behaves, how love manifests in form of joy. If it is not happening in your life, you need a fresh encounter. Amen. Amen. Because the people of the world you are looking at, they have feigned joy. They have feigned love and they know how to do professional love praise God they know how to manifest professional love that the person is saying we will kill you today and the moment you look at them that's what you need to see but that's not the way we build in our kingdom you walk into the office somebody who is planning to kill you will just look at you and give you mm. and you cannot sue him or her but somebody can be fired that a client came in and you are frowning your face at the client. Why? You don't know how to manifest professional love. Every environment is looking for love. We don't work by those artificial professional love. At, at the end of the day, the crux of the matter is, are you lovable? How do you get lovable? By encountering the love of God. Can you love? Now, excuse me. Can you love? A man was killed as a thief. Crucified. The worst kind of death. And yet, the men who worked with him, they were ready to die for him after he has died. And the only reason they were dying is that they are saying, Lord, we know that if we die for you, when you come back, we can still have the privilege of relating with you. How did Jesus relate with his workers that they were ready to die for him in order to continue relating with him when he comes back? How are you relating with your workers? How are you relating with your friends? What kind of friend are you? What kind of brother are you to people around you? Are you lovable? Have you encountered love? Do you know how to love? Do you know how to receive love? Go back to test the teaching. And learn these principles. And add it to what you have learned. Because you will need it in the journey into the realm of multiplication. Stand to your feet. Long enough now to clap if you want to clap. Clap lovely. We are not competing. I know you are a better teacher, but at least show me some love if you think you are blessed. Elder is trying to clap, and some of you are trying to push his hand down. Oh, no, 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 don't clap for him. Oh, oh, come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Did you learn anything this morning? Practice. Practice. Put it into practice. If there is a word that has come to you today, 
put it into practice. God will bless you and multiply you. If the devil employs you, he will talk you out of your garden. And outside your garden, there is no multiplication. There is no supernatural multiplication. If you spend time among wrong people and they are talking wrong things constantly, you will end up losing your own garden of multiplication. Are you hearing this thing now? That's how Adam lost it. By the time you don't know when you start thinking like your friends who despise the body of Christ, the church. By the time you don't know how when you have started thinking like people who are only talking about how to do wicked things to people. Before you know what is happening, your heart has become hardened to practice wickedness. You are about to lose your garden of abundance. Jesus, lift your hands up to heaven. Your place matters. God was with Abraham. Chapter 12 of Genesis. He said, go to the place I will show you. There I will multiply you. Isaac! Don't go from Cape Town. I will bless you in Cape Town and multiply you. He stayed and he was multiplied. Abraham, go to this place. You get there, I will multiply you. He went, he was. Father, lift up your hands, say, My Father and my God, bless me by your word. In my place of abundance, and multiply me. Bless me and multiply me. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and pray that prayer. Lift up your voice and pray that prayer. Lift up your voice and pray. Everybody is leaving South Africa. Everybody is leaving America. Going back to their country. What has God said to you? Who is telling you to move? Is it the devil? Did you employ the devil or did the devil employ you? Oh Lord, bless me and bless me. Malaka Tosia Namataya. Eroko Binia Kalanda Zuta.